Okay, so calculating percent yield just means that you're comparing the actual yield or the actual amount of a product that you get from a chemical reaction with the theoretical yield or the mathematical amount that you would expect to get. Every time we've been doing calculations with stoichiometry, we've been calculating the theoretical yield, the amount that in an ideal world, perfect environment, you could actually get back everything that you would expect to from that product. That doesn't happen in the real world because there are various factors that would prevent you from getting back 100% of what you would mathematically be able to calculate, be that um, a competing reaction or just some error in measurement. Um, you won't ever get back, um, I won't say never, but um, you won't often um, get back exactly what you would calculate that you'd get back. Um, usually there's a little bit of a difference there between what you actually get and what you would expect to get. And that's, that difference um, is what you use to calculate percent yield. The formula is up here. Percent yield is your actual yield. So that is what you would actually get from an experiment, whatever your measurement is, divided by the theoretical yield. And that's the one that we calculate. Um, when you divide those, you're going to get a decimal that you then multiply by 100 to change to a percent. Um, and your actual yield should be smaller than your theoretical yield for those reasons that I briefly discussed. Okay, so here is a problem calculating percent yield that I've written out right here from our review sheet for the test that we've got coming up tomorrow. And it says calculate the percent yield of dinitrogen trioxide, that's N2O3, if 22.0 grams of N2 reacts with oxygen to produce 19.3 grams of dinitrogen trioxide. I've got our chemical equation written out here. Um, it's 2N2 plus 3O2 yields 2N2O3. That's already balanced for us. And I've filled in our chart that we've been using in class, again, with our masses. Now, these are rounded to whole numbers, but basically I got the mass of nitrogen from the periodic table, which was 14. I multiplied it by 2 to get N2, so that was 28, and then I had 2 moles of it. So this is 56 grams, and that is the molar mass of nitrogen gas, N2, times 2 moles. Um, this is for 3 moles of oxygen gas, this is for 2 moles of N2O3. So now we're going to go ahead and set up our problem. With every single calculation that we've done in class, and with this one as well, you have to start all of your calculations with what you know. So whenever we read our question, we're looking for two things. What am I being asked to find? What do I already know? Um, it's pretty easy to spot what you're being asked to find. It says it right here, first few words. Calculate the percent yield of dinitrogen trioxide. That's my unknown. That's what I want to find. And that means I'm going to have to use this equation at some point, my percent yield equation, which means I'm also going to have an actual value for N2O3 and a theoretical value. Um, and as we discussed before, that theoretical value is the one we're going to be calculating. So I am going to have to do a calculation looking for N2O3. All right, so let's read on and see what information we're given in this uh, question. Calculate the percent yield of N2O3 if 22.0 grams of N2, okay, there's a piece of information I'm given, reacts with oxygen to produce 19.3 grams of N2O3. That's another piece of information that I'm going to want to use at some point later. Now, whenever I'm starting the calculation to figure out my N2O3, which is again what I said I was looking for, I'm going to use a piece of information that will help me do that. Okay, This right here is not going to help me find the theoretical yield. This is the actual yield. So I'm not going to start my calculation with this value. I'm going to start it with the value of N because if I figure out if I know how much N that I had, I can figure out how much N2O3 I should be able to produce using the regular stoichiometric calculations we've been using. So let's go ahead and set up that equation. I'm going to go ahead and start by writing my given, which we just said was 22.0 grams of N2 okay, and I'm going to be solving again for what I underlined up here, N2O3. That's what I want. Grams N2O3. And using the chart that we have here, we can use 152 grams from this chart. I'll explain why again in a minute. 
And keep in mind, we right now we have units of grams of N2 times grams of N2O3. That's not a unit really at all, especially not one we'd want here because we are not asked for that. We're asked for just the N2O3. So we need to cancel out this unit. So we're gonna divide by grams of nitrogen. And the value we get here is also from the chart up here. Now remember guys, we're able to use these values from this chart because this chart that we've made here with our masses is already taken into account the ratios of N2 to O to N2O3. Okay, so this takes into account whenever I've calculated this, the fact that the ratio of N2O3 to N2 is two to two because both of their molar masses have already been multiplied by uh, two whenever you calculate these numbers. So let's go ahead now and solve for this. Okay, so we're gonna do 22.0 times 152 and then divide that by uh, 56 and that's going to give us this. And I have rounded that number off so that it matches um, the sig figs that we began with, 22.0, because we won in three sig figs, we have three sig figs. Okay, um, so now we've got this value right here. This is not our answer though. We have not yet calculated percent yield, which is what the question asked me for. So until I get this percent yield, I'm not done. This, what I've calculated, is the amount of N2O3 I should expect to get as a product if I start a reaction with 22 grams of nitrogen in an excess of oxygen. So this is a theoretical value, but we know that again, in the real world, we don't get those theoretical values. In fact, our question tells us what we got. Our question says, that the N2 reacted with oxygen to produce 19.3 grams. So we got nowhere near this amount. So to calculate our percent yield, we're going to use the amount from the question. This is the actual amount that we got and the amount we just calculated, which are our theoretical amount. And we're gonna use those by plugging them into our equation up here at the top. So now let's go ahead and solve for that. Actual 19.3 grams N2O3 divided by my theoretical value that I just calculated, 59.7 grams N2O3. And notice whenever I do this, I no longer have any units because those have canceled, times 100. And this is just to change that decimal answer you're gonna get here to a percentage because this is again percent yield. Okay, so whenever you do this, you're going to end up getting 32.3%. So 32.3% is the percent yield of dinitrogen trioxide that we get from this particular experiment whenever we only produced 19.3 grams when we should have produced 59.7 grams. And that looks like a reasonable answer because if you look at these numbers, this is close to 20, this is close to 60. It should be about a third and that is about a third. Okay, so you can always double check and make sure that your answer looks reasonable as well. Um, so this is how you calculate percent yield. Um, on your test tomorrow, you're gonna have question, uh, a question like this. You're also gonna have one where you're already given your actual yield and your theoretical yield where you just have to plug it in. So if you can do this, you should be able to do the other one. And by the way, on your review sheet, this was number 11. So good luck with the review sheet and good luck with the test tomorrow.